So, who here has watched Top Gun? Thank God. I was really worried I wasn't going to hit my target audience. Um, for the very few people who haven't watched Top Gun, the film is basically about an, an elite naval aviator who's competing with some of his buddies at the academy for the top fighter pilot spot. And for those who have no idea what that means, it's like that episode of Glee where Kurt, Mercedes, and Rachel are all competing for the solo, but in the end they all have to learn to work and sing together. Right? It's pretty basic morals. Um, but unlike Glee, Top Gun stars a young Tom Cruise when he was still attractive. So of course, <laughs> I appreciate that everybody agrees with me. Um, of course, the movie was the highest grossing film of 1986, and it made $176 million, which adjusted for inflation, which is happening a lot, um, it's about $440 million today. And that's a really good thing, because movie making is an incredibly expensive business. Um, for example, you know like the, the fighter jets that they use in Top Gun Maverick, the sequel? Those cost $11,000 an hour to rent which is almost the cost to live in Manhattan at this point. <laughs> well, to save some money, Tony Scott, the director of Top Gun, he decided to ask the US military for some help making his film about the military. And so the Department of Defense gave him a lot of military equipment and personnel, and he was able to get his film made without you know, destroying his budget. And the only thing he had to do for this help was give five copies of his script to the Pentagon get it approved and make every required change that the Pentagon told him to, um, film the script exactly as the Pentagon told him to, and then pre-screen the film for the Pentagon before he could release it to the public. Doesn't that sound a little bit like government issue propaganda? <laughs> but it's not. Um, it's a film, Top Gun is a fun movie that we all watch to escape from our real problems and just to see Val Kilmer and Tom Cruise you know, fight for the top spot and learn the value of cooperation in the end. Except unfortunately, we're, we can't just turn our minds off and watch Top Gun. And it's not just applicable to Top Gun, but Top Gun is the metaphor that I'm going for because it's the best movie ever. <laughs> um, but Top Gun is technically government-issued propaganda. It's a script that's approved by the government. It's made with intention. And that intention is simple. It's made to get people to trust the military. You know, um, back in 1986, when Top Gun was still in theaters, the military set up recruiting stations outside of movie theaters to catch all these excited frat boys hyped up on adrenaline when they were leaving the film. It's basically the same thing that Girl Scout troops do when they sell amendments in front of Kroger and target all these hungry shoppers, except they're targeting people to give up eight years of their life for military service. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with people joining the military. The issue lies in the fact that it's not for any actual reason. Because as awesome as Top Gun is, it's a film. It's a fictional film. It's a made-up movie with made-up people, and it has no actual bearing on the real world. Except a lot of people join the military after they watch Top Gun. According to the US Naval Institute, Naval aviator applications alone increased by 500% after the movie came out. Which is a really high number for people that are bad at math like me. And it's not just the fact that people joined the military. Can you imagine the ripple effect of that decision? There are probably hundreds to thousands of people in the United States whose lives and their children's lives are completely shaped around the decision to enlist. And it's because of a fictional film. And for those of you who haven't seen Top Gun and are getting a bit bored of this, I'm going to change the subject now, so don't worry. Who here has seen The Hunger Games? Or its worst spin-off, Divergent? I don't take criticism. Divergent is not as good as The Hunger Games. Well, back in 2018, some researchers at the University of Maryland and New Chicago found that people who consumed dystopian fiction like The Hunger Games were more likely to understand and justify radical, oftentimes violent forms of political action. So all those YA novels that you devoured during middle school might have had a bit more impact on you than you thought. Some people might call this brainwashing, but my government teacher, shout out Mr. Stolpe, he would call it socialization. In fancy words, socialization is the process by which 
um, we learn and understand our political identities, opinions, and beliefs. And socialization is everywhere. And media is a huge factor in socialization. But unlike what most people think, it's not just whether you're watching MSNBC or Fox News. The fiction that you're watching just for fun is also socializing you. And it has been for a long time, for millennia, honestly. If you read Shakespeare's plays, you know what I'm talking about. They're pretty political. Um, and it's not a bad thing, just like it's also not a good thing. It just happens. The media we watch, the music that we listen to, the TV shows we consume, they can shape and influence our opinions about everything in the world. For example, you know, people who watched Top Gun had more trust in the US government and they enlisted in the military. It didn't just influence their beliefs and opinions, it changed their actions. <sighs> Sorry. Everybody is staring at me. This is a bit nerve wracking. <laughs> awesome. Well, <laughs> it's not just, sorry, it's not just influencing your opinions, it can also change your actions. But it's also not something you need to stress too much about, right? It's not like watching a movie is going to entirely change your opinion on the world. Though Kanye West did say that watching 21 Jump Street may no longer make him an anti-Semite, so anything can happen. But you shouldn't stress too much. Fiction doesn't often, oftentimes fiction isn't changing your opinion, but it oftentimes reinforces opinions. Many of the racial stereotypes that we hold are fostered by and created by, are fostered and created by the media that we consume. Here's another example, Star Wars. This was the basis of my TED talk from the beginning, and for all of those who know me, I am a huge Star Wars fan. And I like Star Wars because it's political. From, it's rife with very unsubtle metaphors about imperialism and corruption. Who here has seen the original trilogy? <laughs> Thank God, once again. I'm really hitting my target audience here, this is a good thing. Um, once again, for those of you who haven't, um, Empire Strikes Best is widely considered to be the best film, but I'm going to tell you now that the best film is actually The Return of the Jedi. After all, it's the final film in the trilogy, so it's where you finally get that battle between the evil empire and the heroic rebels. And for most people who've seen the movie, you likely know that the general audience considers that final battle to be a metaphor for the American Revolution. After all, evil big empire, small heroic rebels. However, that's not actually what the creator intended for it to be. Think about it just for a sec. The Return of the Jedi stars a small group of ragtime rebels fighting in a jungle with help from the local people against a technologically superior regime that is stronger than them in every way. In George Lucas's own words, it was really about the Vietnam War. Star Wars is meant to be a critique of the American government and imper American imperialism, but instead it fueled patriotism in the country. Part of that was because of Ronald Reagan, but that's another story. Once again, it's a fictional story. Think back also to the prequel trilogy that came out when people my age were still kids. Sorry, I was just realizing that's not necessarily the target audience of this room. Um, <laughs> but the prequel trilogy, it's great. And the last film in that trilogy is The Revenge of the Sith, which is um, unquestionably the best film in Star Wars. I take, once again, no objections. Thank you, Brandon. So, Revenge of the Sith, amazing film. It's written just like a Shakespearean tragedy, with the downfall of a democracy to a dictatorship, and the genocide of a culture and a religious order. Yet, for maybe some of the Star Wars fans here, the majority of the fan base actually considers the end of the Jedi Order to be justified. And many fans, perhaps not the majority, but a decent-sized minority, genuinely believe that the Galactic Empire is a better government than the Galactic Republic. Now once again, just like Top Gun, this is fiction. It's fake. It's all made up. None of this has any impact on the real world, except all of us have an impact on the real world. And the people who have that logic in their minds that perhaps the end of the Jedi was fine, it was a good thing, or that the end of the Galactic Republic was great, Galactic Empire was stronger. Just because you may not believe that in real life, most people probably don't. That logic is ingrained in your minds, just from the fiction you watch. Star Wars is political. All fiction is inherently political. 
And that's fine. Popular culture isn't just for fun. And entertainment isn't just meant to be pure escapism. If you watch films like Star Wars or Top Gun or The Hunger Games solely with the intention to ignore all of your problems, you can. You can ignore the purpose of the film and you can ignore what everything means, but you can't outrun the impact that it has unconsciously on your mind, on your beliefs, and on your actions. And this isn't all to say that movies and stories shouldn't be political. In fact, politics is the reason that these stories are good. It's the reason that we all love Top Gun and we all love Star Wars. I just realized all this perhaps not the best thing to say considering not everybody here has seen those movies. But what is Top Gun without American exceptionalism? And what is Star Wars without war? Or what's The Hunger Games without the corrupt President Snow and the evil Pan Am? <laughs> That's also debatable. Once again, it's all fiction, it's all made up. It doesn't matter, except it does. When we look at these films, and we don't care about what they mean, our brains don't allow us to do that. And that's a good thing. Politics should be an entertainment. It has been for centuries. Every story you find in history will have some version of a political idea ingrained into it, even if you don't realize it. But that's what makes those stories good and enjoyable. So I'm not telling you this today because I think that you guys should go home and you guys should like terrifyingly watch your next movie knowing that you are being brainwashed by these films, you shouldn't. It's fun. But, there's always a but, isn't there? But, the films that you watch do socialize you. They do impact your political beliefs. They impact the criteria that you hold when you choose who to vote for. They impact your political tolerance and empathy. They impact the trust that we have in our government and in our political systems, like democracy. So the next time you go home and you turn on Netflix, when you're watching it, please have fun. Know that all of the stories that you're watching are probably in some way political, and that's why you should enjoy it. But when you turn on that TV show, ask yourself just really briefly, what is this actually saying? And what is this actually trying to tell me? And you may enjoy the film more, you may enjoy it a bit less, but it will make you more aware of where beliefs are coming from and what those beliefs are. Thank you.